Good morning. My name is Pastor Joseph Dietrich, and I welcome you to the third Sunday after Epiphany, our service in which we say we want to see Jesus, and we see Jesus fulfilling the scriptures. Um, my prayer is that this worship will be a blessing to you as we listen to God's word. We begin. We the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. And we pray, Almighty God, you sent your Son to proclaim your kingdom and to teach with authority. Anoint us with the power of your Spirit, so that we too, may bring good news to the afflicted, bind up the brokenhearted, and proclaim liberty to the captive. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson for this third Sunday after the Epiphany is recorded in Isaiah chapter 61, Verses 1 to 6. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be oak called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Strangers will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards, and you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. This is the word of our God. The gospel lesson for, our, for this Sunday is recorded in Luke chapter 4, Verses 14 to 21. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, 
because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for, for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This is the gospel of the Lord. And we pray, Lord God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as we gather to worship, to hear your word, let the word, the word, the light of your word fill our hearts and minds so that we believe in your Son, Jesus Christ, that he is the Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, who has come to bring salvation and release from the prison of sin and death. May the meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What, what qualifications or skills do you need for your work? Is it writing or math or communication skills? How can you tell? if you're doing what you are supposed to be doing. Every school, every job, every profession has benchmarks, standards by which they can tell the students, the employees, the employers what is expected of them. A truck driver, for example, needs a license and the skills to be able to take the drive the truck forward on streets and roads and also back it up safely into the loading docks. Students from grade one to 12 to college all have benchmarks, guidelines by which they, they need to pass at each level. And every year they have tests to see, have they passed this level and are they fit to carry on? Electricians, Plumbers, carpenters have licenses for, for their jobs. Teachers, too, must pass tests to, to become a teacher. In fact, right now we have student teachers at Peridot, our Savior Lutheran School, who are completing their work to become qualified as teachers. Yes, every job, every profession has benchmarks standards by which they determine whether a person is qualified or unqualified. This brings us to a question, what qualifies Jesus to be called the light of the world, the one true Savior? How can we know that the Christian faith is the true faith? the one faith that is worthy of holding on to in life and in death. In other words, how does the Christian faith pass the test so that it can be trusted? This morning we continue our series of sermons, uh, Epiphany sermons, entitled, We Want to See Jesus, and today we see why we can trust Jesus. In him and by him, the scriptures are fulfilled. Yes, Jesus fulfills the scripture. Our text for today is from Luke chapter 4. In Luke's gospel, Jesus has just finished being tempted by the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. And each time the Luke, that Luke describes a specific temptation from the devil, 
Jesus answered by using scripture. He said, it is written. It is written, you shall, man shall not live a man, man shall not live by bread alone, but by the word of God. It is written that it is it is written that there's you shall not put your Lord to the test. It is written you shall worship the Lord your God and Him only. And finally, the the devil left. So each time Jesus used the scripture to fight off temptation. And now we read in our text, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He taught in the synagogues, and everyone praised him. Here's a question. What did Jesus teach in the synagogues? You got it. The scriptures. Everywhere he went, he focused on the word of God, the scriptures that had been written by Moses and the prophets and preserved by the faithful believers through the centuries so that now when Jesus is living, he is able to share these scriptures and read them wherever he goes. And so uh, he would continue throughout his ministry, holding up the scriptures and teaching from them, for he would say, the scriptures cannot be broken. He would also say, these are the scriptures that testify about me. So now today, early in his ministry, Jesus has been getting a lot of attention. People everywhere are praising him. He has gathered some disciples, such as Peter and Andrew, James and John, and some others. In Cana, he has amazed the family by, uh, by saving their, their wedding reception by turning water into wine. Now he's heading up the hill to Nazareth, where he had grown up. All eyes are on him as he comes into town. For he is a local boy who is starting to become famous. What will he do? Well, on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue, as was his custom. He went to the house of worship where he had grown up at. Mary and, Mary and Joseph had taken him to this synagogue many, many times. People were eager to see him and hear him. What would he say? The attendant gave his scroll to a scroll of the prophet Isaiah to him. And unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, the Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll he gave it back to the attendant. He sat down and began by saying, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Boom! You could have heard a pin drop. Do you know what he was saying? Did you hear that? He said that he has fulfilled and is continuing to fulfill, because he used a perfect tense, fill, fulfill this scripture. And this scripture that talk, is talking about the Messiah, the coming Savior, and this scripture was written 700 years ago. And Jesus is saying, 
he is at this time now fulfilling it. Wow. The people are silent. This man who grew up in their town as a child and seemed like another child, except he did listen very well when he came to the synagogue. But the Messiah? This is what Jesus is saying. He has been anointed by the Holy Spirit at his baptism at the Jordan, where the Father spoke, This is my Son, whom I, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And the Holy Spirit lit on the shoulder of Jesus in the form of a dove. Now he's telling them that he is the one who is here to preach the good news to the poor and to bring release for the oppressed. And he's not talking about just poor in money or, or people who are in jail. He's talking about releasing people from the power of sin and death and to take to take away the power of the, of the devil who holds people in guilt. He's talking about releasing people from sin and death and the power of the devil. And he's proclaiming that he is the one who does that. And how will he do that? Well, Isaiah tells, how will he save people from their sins? How will he release, the, release those who are trapped in the guilt of sin and death? Well, Isaiah tells us in chapter 53 that he would do something else. He would be pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, and the punishment that brought us peace that was on him, and by his wounds, we are healed. Jesus will save the oppressed by becoming oppressed himself. He will bring sight to the blind by closing his eyes in death and then rising from the grave victorious. By his victory over death, they will see his salvation. Isaiah the prophet speaks of great and wonderful things that the Messiah would do. And so if Jesus is claiming to be the Messiah, as he is, he would need to fulfill all of those promises that are made in the scripture. And there are many, some at least 300, 300 specific ones in the Old Testament. For example, born of a virgin, born in Bethlehem out of Galilee, freedom for prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, pierced for our transgressions, seeing the light of life after his death, and, and there's more. If Jesus is to make this claim that he fulfills scripture, then, as C.S. Lewis once said, he's either the world's biggest liar, or craziest lunatic, or he's the Lord himself, because his claim is so huge. And imagine if I, a man, would walk into a room and say some of the things that Jesus said, which he said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I will release the prisoners. I will bring freedom to the oppressed. They would look at me and say, either you're lying through your teeth, or you're crazy as a loon, or it's the truth. And as we study scripture, we see that Jesus is the Christ. He does, and he did, and he continues to fulfill the scriptures, every single promise. It's amazing. And by tying himself to the scriptures, 
he, Jesus, gives us a benchmark, a standard, by which we can judge truth. When scriptures speak, they point to him. And when he speaks, he points to scripture. In doing this, he invites all people to search the scriptures to see how he has indeed fulfilled them, all of them. And as he shows us through the scriptures that he is who he says he, he is, then, and he does what the scripture said that he would do, then our hearts are filled with faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, our Savior. And through reading the scriptures and seeing how Christ fulfilled the scriptures, our own hearts are filled with faith, for he has done it. As the Apostle John concluded his gospel, he said, These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Yes, the scriptures are written so that we may believe that Jesus has fulfilled all of God's promises and is our Savior. And he gave his sinless life on the cross to pay for our sins, the sins of the world. He did it to take away oppression and the imprisonment of sin and guilt and fear and death. He gave himself so that we might receive new life through the forgiveness of sins. And so he calls us to read the Bible, that we may believe all that he has done for us. This is why I invite you to Bible classes, to, to grow in the word and grow in your faith. At the same time, right, we say uh, we don't pass the Bible off as just an old book that's out of date or irrelevant for our time, or don't say that all oh, the Bible, that's just a, a white man's book. No, the, the Bible is God's word, and where the God himself fulfilled the promises to assure us that our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the Messiah, and he has fulfilled the scriptures to bring life for us. And so we say, stand on the scriptures, believe on them. You might also, I might also say that our faith, our faith is, is anchored on the scriptures. And so other things that people say or do are not so important. Some people say, well, I, I feel this. I, I feel that this is the right thing. Our faith does not stand on our feelings. It stands on the scriptures, which have shown that Christ has fulfilled our, his work. And likewise, some people will have dreams, and they say, well, I had a dream, and I had a dream. Our faith does not stand on dreams either. Our faith is anchored on the word of God and the promises that it gives and the promises fulfilled that Christ has done. Sadly, on this day in Nazareth, the people of Nazareth did not accept Jesus' words that he had fulfilled the scriptures. In fact, they would rise in anger and they took him out of the synagogue and pushed him to the edge of the cliff on which the city of Nazareth is built, and they were ready to push him off. But Jesus walked right back, right through them, and continued on his life to continue to fulfill all the scriptures for us and also for those whom he, to, who were in Nazareth on that day. Jesus, even though the other people did not listen to him or trust in him, 
he would continue on to fulfill every promise of Scripture to be our Savior, our Lord. Trust in him, my friends. Put your faith fully in him, for he has fulfilled the Scriptures. He is our Savior. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And we, we confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And receive, and we pray also the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And receive with believing hearts the blessing of our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.